I'm trying to give people a different thought process of life where failure, hell, disappointment, discomfort is a great learning tool. And many people don't understand that, but it's these few moments in life that you have. Like for me, I always talk about it. Rocky won round 14. That one two minute and 13 second clip of Rocky getting up when Apollo knocked him down. That one clip, when I was going through a very bad time in my life, I saw what I wanted to be. And it wasn't a guy that won. It wasn't a guy that won everything he did. It was a guy that kept getting up after being knocked down. So I realized if that two minutes and 13 seconds changed my life, so I was. I saw something that I needed to be in the world I was living in. Maybe my story will give someone the two minutes and 13 seconds they need to change their life. Means that people live in a very comfortable place, that's fine. Don't listen to me. A lot of people are looking for that two minutes and 13 seconds. Mm. And I might be that person. What was the, the hardest obstacle to overcome um, up until about 50? The hardest obstacle was myself. Mm. I started realizing more and more and more that all these people were gone. What was haunting me was me. I can't control my dad. I can't control the people calling me. I can't control all these things, but they were things that kept me down. It started to become my reality. My reality was what they made it out to be. And I became my own. The most important conversation you'll ever have with your life, you know, in your life is when you have yourself. Mm -hmm. And yeah. my conversation was absolutely horrifying. What were you saying to yourself? I'm dumb. I'm nobody. So what happens is you start to get this picture that everybody hates you because your reality becomes so, so big mm -hmm. that you don't, you, I mean, you can't see the clear picture. It, it was the whole town. Yeah, yeah. Everybody hated me. So start the world out, hates me. That's right. Yeah. And that's when it, that's when it became toxic. And that is where I became my worst enemy. This is the world that is in front of me. And what most people do is they see this world and they look at it as an excuse to get out of it. I started looking at it as this is the ultimate training ground for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I have all these valuable lessons because if you look out in the world right now today, it's not a nice place. I'm very prepared for it. I'm prepared for it. I'm prepared for all the failure coming my way. I'm prepared for everything my way. But I started down the road of instead of the path of, you know, least resistance, I started choosing the path of most resistance to prepare myself for the journey that was coming my way. I made this person. I made this person by diving in to the insecurities that life gave me. Because now they're yours. They're yours to own. If you're not smart, call yourself dumb. It's okay. Because you are. But take that now as you're putting yourself down. If you're fat, call yourself fat. I used to be 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. We, we want to talk so soft to ourselves. We're looking for that recovery day. And that recovery day is everything in your life. Everything in your life is a recovery day. We're looking for it. It's not coming. It's not coming. Get over that recovery day. When you start to build yourself up and start to have the one thing that we don't have is confidence. Yeah. Real, authentic confidence from hard work. Everything else goes away. You, you no longer look to other people for your self-esteem. Validation. That's right. Or, yeah. You now know. I walk in a room now and I know the hours and years and decades I put into David Goggins. That's something, it's not on the wall. It's not a trophy on the wall. It's not a medal on your neck. It is actually a feeling in your heart. Because through my journey, I figured out the one piece I was missing. I thought it was cars. I thought it was women. I thought it was, money. I thought it was money. I thought it was everything. The one piece I was missing was me having the courage to face myself. And once you do that on a daily basis, it's not about the running. Work, people are going to be, you about working out. Where I got my work ethic from was the hours I had to spend learning this. When you sit down and you're not smart, and you have a disability, yeah. and you still want to be at the top of your class, I didn't want to just get by. 
when I realized that I can learn through hard work and I can beat the valedictorian in school, but I got put in 10 hours more a day than he does. You know what kind of strength comes from that? When you're sitting down and that guy, that, that valedictorian studied for an hour and you know I caught you. I caught you and I am dumb. But I have the work ethic to catch you. And you realize through hard work, you can do, you can outwork anybody. Mm -hmm. No matter how badass they are. But that's the part people don't want to yeah. dive into. Yeah. When someone's lacking confidence in themselves, what's, right. what's the answer you would give them? They're like, how do I gain more confidence? It starts with yourself, man. You got to start diving into those things that you are afraid of. You don't gain confidence by going to the spot that makes you feel good. It's going to be a false reality. And the second life gives you that challenge, all you want to do is go back to what made you confidence or, 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 or what gave you confidence is that happy spot. No, what gives you confidence, what gave me confidence was spending years at a kitchen table trying to learn how to read and write on my own, realizing I can't learn the way you learn. I can't, but I can learn. What gives you confidence, not being afraid, is overcoming the fear. I used to stutter severely bad. So right now, I don't know how many people are going to watch this. Mm -hmm. You know what gives me confidence? Is knowing I no longer care <laughs> if I sit and start stuttering to you. Yeah. That's what gives me confidence, is facing these things, overcoming them. And maybe not overcoming them every day, but facing them. And facing them and facing them pretty soon like this. You know what, man? This is where it's at. It's not in that comfort zone. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. Mm -hmm. That's where it's getting built. But people want to, they want an easier answer. There has to be an easier way. There's not. Whenever hardness comes, and you don't know what it is, it may be different for you than it is for me, but you go back to your insecurities. And then when you go back to your insecurities, you then look for comfort within those insecurities. And we all look for that cookie that your mom used to give you right. when you were sad, yeah. when you were sick. We look for our wife or our husband. We look for comfort. It's in those moments you must retrain your mind mm. to think differently in hell. Most of us, we live in a box and we don't want to go outside that box at all, ever. Outside that box is all these possibilities of life. What we do is we shackle our mind. We are a prisoner in our own mind that this is all I can do. This is all I'm good at. And we we, we take away the possibilities of you could be this, you could be that, yeah. you could be all these things. Mm -hmm. And I never thought at 300 pounds I could be Navy SEAL. Wow. So if my mind was shackled, I mean, you would never meet. There'd be no book. There'd be no book. There'd be nothing. What would you say at your First one is, you are your own hero. You are your own leader. You are your own man. That is a big one because we idolize so many people mm -hmm. and we want to be them. We want to be someone else. And in doing that, you lose all the potential of who you are. You mimic, you be them, you are them, you become them and you lose you. And we look up to so many people in this world who will let us down. We're humans. I'm going to let you down. You're going to let somebody down. If you put them on a pedestal, you then lose time when that person comes up and lets you down. You must hold yourself accountable and being your own hero, that's what that does. You make yourself so totally accountable for who you are. You focus on you and only on you to become the best person you can be for others. Because we leave a lot on the table, not searching who we are. And then therefore, we die not knowing your greatest potential. The, the next one I would say is, um, the biggest one I would say is never pick the easy road. Mm. Never, never. And it always goes back to kind of that, the hero mentality. Never pick the easy road ever in your life. That is the one road that is due. It is due. If you want something like six minute abs, all mm -hmm. these different things, if you want it so fast, mm -hmm. you're, you may achieve what you wanted, 
But you want the permanent fix. The permanent fix comes from the hard road. The hard road gives you permanent results. Mm. The easy road gives you the quick fix. You will go back to where you started on the easy route. That hard route is so permanent that it ends up callousing you everywhere. The last one is, when you get to where you want to go, finally get there, finally reach that. When you're there, the happiest, realize this. You're not there yet. <laughs>